Cyprus, the third largest island in the Mediterranean, with a long history and rich cultural heritage. An island of beauty and extremes. An open-air museum that displays how things used to be. Lefkosia, or Nicosia, is the capital, with an almost circular old town that is completely surrounded by walls from the Venetian period. Famagusta Gate is one of the town's original three gates. This led to the Tahr el Kara district, with its many narrow alleys, small buildings and handicraft studios. The Pan-Cypriot Secondary School and the adjacent Icon Museum form the frame of the central Macaria Square. And the capital's old Orthodox John Cathedral stands next to the monumental Archbishop's Palace that was built during the time of Archbishop Macarius. The most interesting old middle-class building of the town is the nearby house of Haji Jokakis Conisius, with an arcaded courtyard and fountain. Recalling Ottoman times is the Araya Hammam and a mosque of the same name. The bustling pedestrian area represents today's modern city. an attractive promenade in the old town. Nicosia's largest church is the Fanara Mene Church with its elegant Venetian bell tower. Next to it, one of the town's smallest mosques. And the prosaic construction of the modern Moronite church beyond Paphos Gate that leads out of the historic center. The port of Larnaca is considered to be the gateway to the island. A well-renovated Turkish fortress was originally built here to defend the city. It was subsequently used as a prison. Today the fortress is a museum in which tourists marvel at ancient weaponry and with an impressive view of both city and sea. Just behind the Jami Kabir Mosque, and the old quarter with its houses and shops which typify the atmosphere of ancient Cyprus. The dominant Lazarus Cathedral rises from the town centre, one of the oldest historic monuments in Larnaca with a fascinating history. It was thought to have been built by the Byzantine Emperor Leo VI above the empty grave of Lazarus. The crypt beneath the chancel is still in use today. The remains of the ancient city kingdom of Kition lie beneath the Larnaca of today, and some sections of it have been excavated. The beach begins just beyond the marina. In the summer months, visitors enjoy the sea, sand and promenade and the many restaurants and cafes. The splendid warehouses of the Crusader port are now home to museums and art galleries. And in the new 
Rescue Marina various craft lie at anchor and also many day trips embark from here. Close to Larnaca is a huge salt lake, which in winter is populated by hundreds of pink flamingos. Far in the background, a mosque appears. On the shore, in the middle of a small palm grove, is the most beautiful mosque in Cyprus, Hala Sultan Teke. According to legend, it's said that the foster mother of Prophet Muhammad was buried here. And the story goes that three huge slabs of stone from Mecca miraculously floated by and were used to construct the monument. Towards the eastern tip of the island, there's a meandering river that is often swamped by the sea. Several fishing boats lie at anchor here. Picture perfect, with fishermen on small boats mending their nets. Here, time stands still and a strong sense of calm and relaxation takes over. Aya Napa, the southeastern corner of Cyprus. Once a small fishing settlement. Today, a lively tourist resort. A picturesque 16th century monastery is situated in the center of the town with an arcaded Venetian courtyard and Gothic pointed arches that date back to the Crusades. An octagonal fountain exudes southern charm, decorated with elaborate relief heads and garlands. Above all, these dream beaches attract hordes of tourists, a paradise for sun worshippers and those who like to swim, and a hotspot for the nocturnal club scene. Ayanapa delivers holiday fun around the clock. West from Larnaca in the village of Kiti is one of the island's oldest churches, Panagia Angeloctistos, built by angels. This Gothic chapel that dates back to the time of the Crusades was built above an early Christian basilica that was connected to a Byzantine church. The ancient mosaic of Maria Hodegatria shows the way of salvation. Together with other icons, these masterpieces are among Cyprus's greatest art treasures. The nearby and remote Cape Kitty is located at the extreme tip of the island that is dominated by a lighthouse of British colonial times. This rugged section of the coast is not a tourist beach yet its coarse pebbles have a certain charm of their own. This part of the coast evokes the past of former conquerors, traders and pilgrims. In the center of the island is Cyprus' oldest monastery, which is located on a prominent mountain cone which rises 768 meters from the coastal plain. The Stavrovuni Monastery, where women are forbidden. In ancient times, there was a temple here in honor of Aphrodite. Helena, the mother of Emperor Constantine, landed here.
she possessed three small crosses from the cross of Christ, and nails, rope, and the crown of thorns. It was here that she had a dream. The dream told her to build a monastery on the summit of this mountain and leave part of the cross as a relic. And that is how the name Mountain of the Cross evolved. The mountain village of Lefkara is situated within the foothills of the Trudos Mountains. Today, both Pano and Kato Lefkara are similar districts that have developed together. Narrow cobbled alleys separate the stately buildings of solid stone blocks with ornate door frames and wrought iron balconies. The church of the Archangel Michael, located in the center, contains various wall paintings that date back to the 12th century. In front of the church, there's much activity. Local handicrafts provide many with a regular income. The stone ornamentation of the church's external walls is typical of the Middle Ages. The southern warmth of the Mediterranean region is blessed with flowers and fruit. And yet the heat of high summer also reaches to this altitude. In some of the streets, the older houses are threatened by decay. But tourism helps to preserve village life. For centuries, the women of Lefkara have skillfully produced traditional white embroidery, which includes tablecloths, napkins and handkerchiefs. And the men specialize in the processing of silver and enjoy being observed. Extraordinary arts and crafts are offered at a reasonable price, which proves good for both tourists and villagers alike. In the eastern part of Trudos, two hermits from Palestine founded the Machiris Monastery in 1148. Unfortunately, both church and monastery buildings burned down in 1892, but were later rebuilt. The new wall paintings of the church in Byzantine style indicate how this fine monastery was founded. An ancient icon that is almost entirely covered in silver and whose discovery led to the foundation of the monastery hangs gracefully on the iconostasis. Over the years, it is believed to have created many miracles. One of the two hermits injured himself in a fall, drank from a source that was adorned with this Marian icon, and was immediately healed. When they later traveled to Constantinople to report their find to the Byzantine emperor, he donated both the money and the land. And the belief in this power of miracles remains unbroken right up until today. However, the remaining monks are not particularly fond of tourists. The circular huts of the Stone Age settlement of Kirokitia were built close together. And beneath the floor, bowls that contain skeletons in a fetal position. 
An entire hill is covered with the remains of the Stone Age settlement, and a wall protected it from attack. A settlement totally different in construction to those found in Central Europe. The Neolithic village was situated close to a river that not only provided water, the riverbed contained stone that was used for building. The Stone Age settlements of Cyprus will most likely always remain a mystery. On the southern Mediterranean coast in Akrotiri Bay are the ruins of Amatus, one of the island's early city kingdoms. The town was an important commercial Phoenician outpost to numerous countries in the east. And it was also the birthplace of St. John, the founder of the Order of St. John. The Romans retained Amatus for administration, so the ruins of the Acropolis, Agora and the Temple of Aphrodite are also located here. Only after the destruction wrought by Richard the Lionheart was the city finally abandoned. With the end of Amatus, the nearby Lemosos, or the Limassol of today, gained further importance, and it still possesses the island's most important harbour. The Crusaders landed here during the Third Crusade on their way to Jerusalem. But long before this, fishermen and pirates had already taken advantage of the natural harbour. The fort was situated directly on the coast and was rebuilt by the Templars following its destruction in the 13th century. It is said that here Richard the Lionheart married Princess Berengaria of Navarra and the Order of Templars set up its headquarters after being driven out of Aku. In the narrow alleys of the old town, the atmosphere of the region is still very much alive. And the shopping here is a real pleasure. The massive construction of the Napa Aya church dominates the old town. And the pedestrian zone provides interesting shops, restaurants and street cafes. The city is changing more and more into a modern city, whose historic central market hall is still the largest and most interesting on the island. On the coast, there's a generous boulevard with a high-rise skyline and multi-lane road. And the palm-lined promenade is great for fishing. When the Knights of St. John were finally driven from the Holy Land, they first landed in Cyprus. The monumental Colossi Castle became one of their estates, and within its plantations grow fruit, sugarcane fields, olive groves and vineyards. The completely restored dwelling tower provides an insight into the living conditions of that time. Rugged stone walls protected from both hostilities and extreme temperatures. The inhabitants lived on the upper two floors. Sixty villagers and their inhabitants belonged to the order. In an adjoining sugar mill, much prized sugarcane was produced and exported to as far as Venice. One of the most interesting archaeological sites on the south coast. 
an ancient ruined city of huge dimensions. A massive roof covers the large area of the Eustolios and protects the mosaics and walls from the elements. It was once the villa of a wealthy Roman. Its mosaics were partly influenced by Christianity. This ancient city had a huge theater and massive stone buildings that were destroyed by a devastating earthquake. The remains of a once monumental Christian basilica demonstrate the early times of Christianity that became a state religion in 381 AD. The Forum Romanum was surrounded by attractions and the public baths with their underfloor heating look very convincing even today. In the middle of the 20th century, the spectacular Roman ruins were excavated by American archaeologists, such as that of the House of the Gladiators and the House of the Achill, whose floor mosaics feature ancient heroes dressed in female attire. The Apollo Halates sanctuary lies outside the ancient city. Further west, several picturesque rocks emerge from the sea. Here, a myth was born, Petra to Romeo. It is said that here, Aphrodite once stepped out of the foaming waves. The goddess of beauty and love, daughter of heaven and earth. The beach is a popular meeting point for one and all. In ancient times, Paphos was for 600 years the capital of Cyprus and an archaeological location that became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This conservation area includes Palia and Kato Paphos. Palia Paphos is situated on the plateau of a limestone hill and contains the sanctuary of Aphrodite. Numerous rituals attracted pilgrims from far and wide, as well as those who wished to experience religious prostitution. In the 12th century, the Frankish Lusignan dynasty successfully established a feudal system. And in addition to the construction of several castles and cathedrals, Paphos became an administrative center. Numerous exhibits demonstrate colonization since Archean times, and various objects from each period are displayed. Like a fortress, the property is situated in a prominent location. Near to the medieval buildings, the small Catholic church became the main church of this area. Paphos city was developed for tourism. Here, ancient and contemporary times unite harmoniously with a fortress next to the harbor. The beach promenade lies in front of a large district that contains various hotels, restaurants, cafes and shops. A fascinating place. Since the time of Nicoclis, the harbour has changed several times, but it's always been the heart of the city. Most of the inhabitants live in the upper town of Katima, that was built on a plateau. Its alleys are adorned with classical facades. And the colorful hustle and bustle of the market offers much southern flair. The fruit and vegetable market is also very popular. From early in the morning, the local farmers sell their fresh products.
here there are small gardens and parks, colonial buildings and churches. The atmosphere of this small town is really special. The view from here and along the coast that includes a bygone world of Greek Roman history teases the senses. Today, Katopaphos is an archaeological site. The spacious landscaped Roman atrium villas and their wonderful mosaics that depict numerous Greek legends are among the most valuable of their kind. The Greek Macedonian Ptolemaic kings who resided in Egyptian Alexandria selected Paphos as the capital of the island and it remained so under subsequent Roman governance. The famous mosaics were discovered accidentally in 1962. They cover the floors of a number of the buildings of the ancient city, of which unfortunately only the foundation walls have survived. Its prosperity continued until the 4th century, when it was struck by a powerful earthquake. The underground tombs of the kings of Paphos survived, but no regents were buried here, only the wealthy and high officials of the former Ptolemaic administration. Steps lead down to the inner courtyards of the peristyle tombs, carved out of the reddish rock and which rise on the waterfront and overlook the sea. These courtyards were often framed by Doric columns and pillars and the dead rest in niches decorated with wall paintings. North of Paphos is the elevated Old Cross Capola Church of Panagia Chrysalusa. The wall paintings of its interior also date back to the 12th century. Unfortunately, they were badly damaged by an irresponsible restaurateur. However, perhaps these works of art will one day be saved. The village of Ember is one of the island's 50 excavation sites. Since 1976, archaeologists from Edinburgh University in the UK have been excavating a small village in this location. Circular huts of a Bronze Age settlement have been built upon the original foundations. The walls consist of bricks made of mud and straw, and the ceilings of wood. In the middle of the hut were holes for fireplaces. The walls were painted with basic natural colorings, both inside and out, and red ornaments decorated the primeval dwellings. The Neophytos Monastery perches like a swallow's nest high up on Charter Mountain at the end of a road. It is dedicated to a saint who lived here as a hermit and was later joined by several more of the faithful. The old cave church, the first dwelling place of Neophytos, and the hermit's burial place are open to the public. They are situated in a rock wall at the edge of the monastery. In the heart of the island is Trudos, with its vine-growing region. Even in ancient times, writers praised the exceptional quality of Cypriot grapes and wines. Cyprus was one of the first countries in which grapes were cultivated to produce wine. Settlers introduced vines from the mainland. Here, 
Here, the climate, location and composition of the soil each favour the growing of vines, which is why this region has been well known as a classic vine growing region since the dawn of time. And the smell of jasmine and thyme pervades the captivating landscape. Journeying across the Trudos Mountains, again and again are small monasteries such as that of Ayamoni. The interior of the church contains more religious jewellery, but in a newer fashion. Vineyards and cedar forests surround this monastery near to Chrysa Royatissa, founded in 1192 by the hermit Ignatius. According to legend, he was told in a dream to build a church on the site of which he had discovered a Marian icon painted by Luke the Apostle. Valuable old icons and crosses are restored here. It's a wonderful location and the high quality of the wine made the monastery famous. The monastery's wine cellars have won many international prizes. <laughs> the local bars often stock this noble wine, a good and tasty drink that's ideal for toasting the welfare of the monks. The village of Omodos is located in a vineyard on a hillside across from Panoplatris. The older villagers have grown accustomed to visitors and they often rush in groups across the most beautiful town square in Cyprus. In the centre of the village is the no longer inhabited Timius Stavros Monastery. It was restored in 1994. The women sit in the alleys and work diligently at their speciality, a modos lace. And several villagers have arranged their houses, traditionally built of rough stone, as living museums. In the extreme northwest, at the edge of the Akamas Peninsula, the legends of Aphrodite are still alive. Here is a bath, a kind of ancient whirlpool that is supplied by a natural spring. The Akamas Peninsula forms the western region of Cyprus. In this nature reserve grow more than 500 kinds of plants. According to legend, it was here that Adonis met the goddess of love, Aphrodite, and duly fell in love with her. He hunted in the forest and stopped to drink from a spring. There he saw the naked beauty bathing and instantly fell in love. The rugged cliffs against which the waves of the Mediterranean break, with foam splashing up the rocks, is an untouched coastal landscape. The washed out sandstone rock features the primeval history of the island. About 19 million years ago, the rocks of Trudos lay beneath the Tithis Sea. Today, these faded formations look like masks, heads and fabulous beings. Within the Ziros Valley, several Venetian bridges indicate a former ancient camel route that led through the valley.
copper ore from the mines of Trudos was transported to Paphos on the coast, and from there was shipped abroad. Kikos is located some distance from the nearest village and is situated at an altitude of 1140 meters above sea level on the mountain of the same name in the Trudos. Even at the main entrance, golden shining mosaics adorn the walls. The entire monastery complex looks like a fortress. But beyond its somewhat severe exterior are two inner courtyards with colonnades on each level. Everything indicates the wealth that the monastery accumulated over the centuries. In 1998, a splendid sacred museum was inaugurated here that exhibits numerous works of precious art. The sparkle and magnificence of the Byzantine Empire is featured because the roots of the monastery and its interior date back to that time. Important works of art with an interesting history. The Panagia is entered from the second inner courtyard. The iconostasis of this small monastery church are among the most splendid and precious of the Greek Orthodox world. Everything that shines here is real gold. Hidden within a shrine made of mother of pearl and located on the front of the iconostasis is the famous Mother Mary icon. It's said to be more than 2,000 years old. Unfortunately, this can't be verified because a gilded silver plate has covered the revered image for more than 200 years. The Trudos looks like a low mountain range with many hills and forests. A remote, almost inaccessible area that's become a hiding place for persecuted Christians and a secure storage place for works of art that were endangered by iconoclasm. Perdulus, a small village in the Maratasa region, contains, in addition to the well-maintained Archangel Michael Church, another church that dates back to the 15th century. It stands modestly in the lower part of the village. From the outside, the church looks like a barn, but inside are a number of colorful Byzantine wall paintings. including St. George Diasoritis on his white horse, with flowing cape, decorated shield and spear. In 1474, the artist Minas created the holy story according to ancient Byzantine tradition. Minas skillfully placed above a picture cycle of the New Testament and in the lower part, numerous saints. He was influenced by the Macedonian school of art, clear and linear. Even the doors and metal fittings indicate this art form. In order to protect numerous exceptional icons and other religious objects, a museum was established, ensuring the preservation of these centuries-old treasures. Located on a rock in the nearby village of Matulas is another ancient church. Its construction and frescoes date back to the 13th century. In actual fact, the apostles Paul and Barnabas came to this region and introduced its inhabitants to the soul-saving message of the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
In the first of these churches, the message of the new faith was delivered, and from there it was passed on to all mankind. This, the most remote village of the region, contains the Ios Ioannis Lambadistas Monastery. The monastery was probably built towards the end of the Venetians' governance and named after Saint Heraclidios, who was baptized in the adjacent river. The monastery consists of three churches of different ages. Firstly, an 11th century cross-dome church. The majority of these well-preserved frescoes depict saints, prophets, and the four evangelists. In the 12th century, the chapel of St. John Lampadistes was added. It shines out in silver and gold next to the iconostasis. The tree of Jesse adorns the whole of the western wall, the genealogy of Christ. In a small niche, a silver-lined reliquary is set up with the head of the saint. And on tablets of stone are the memories of those who visited the Holy Land. The Solia region boasts further picturesque villages, such as those of Cacopetria and Galata. In the middle of Cacopetria, the reason why this valley is so fertile becomes apparent. A waterfall feeds the Cariotas River, which sets everything into blossom. It is tourism that has brought life back to this remote mountain region. Without it, the village would almost certainly be little known. Buildings have been restored and placed under official conservation. Several of the small listed buildings made of simple rock and mud bricks line both sides of the narrow village street. In the Solia region, there's a monastery that was built in the early 11th century the main church of which has survived to the present day, the Ios Nikolaios Tistegas Church. A second gable roof with flat tiles was built in the 13th century. St. Nikolaos, the name from the roof, is contained on an icon. Indeed, the interior of the church could also be referred to as a museum of Byzantine art with various sacred designs on each surface. The humanity of the saint's portraits depicts the deep religious faith of the artists and their inspired imagination. At the lower end of Galatia is the inconspicuous Panagia Porito Church. Another barn roof church with a brick-built pitched roof. Its few frescoes stand out well in their vibrant colors and Italian influence. It's believed that they were painted in around 1500 AD. The island of Cyprus was occupied at the time by the Venetians and therefore contained significant influences of Western Renaissance art. The Asinu church is situated on a small plateau just outside the village. This church is also part of the precious heritage of church culture. Its representatives, the bishops, were enthroned in Cyprus by the apostles and their successors. The magnificent frescoes of the church's interior are a fine example of Byzantine art. First, a mixture of chalk and lime was prepared. Next, the outline of each scene was marked on the ground with red or yellow paint 
and then the various colors were applied, first the light ones, then the darker ones. The torments of hell are portrayed in a simple yet extremely realistic way. But the Virgin Mary with Jesus watches over and protects the believers. The Pitsilia region is the southeastern branch of Trudos. The solitude found here appealed to the Greek Cypriots who had escaped from Ottoman invasion. But long before, it had already been a refuge for Christians. In Lagodira, a large barn roof protects the Panagia to Araka church. The interior overwhelms with its radiant treasure of frescoes and icons. Here, the first Christians discovered the truth of the gospel beyond both Palestine and the Holy Land. These monuments are considered to be part of the precious heritage of mankind. Outside of Platanistaza, the Stavros to Ayasmati church stands alone within the wooded mountain scenery. In around 1500 AD, Philippos Gul painted the internal walls which once belonged to a monastery long since decayed. In Orthodox Christianity, the figures were meant to depict images of a true archetype of a divine and holy nature, not one created by man. For centuries, the illustrations were quite similar and the placement of the images always followed a fixed pattern. Everywhere radiates Byzantine religious art a testimony of a glorious heritage, treasures of times long past. The large village of Palaikori contains the Metamorphosis to Sitiru Church. Situated amid vineyards, it towers over the village. In dignified pose, a monk watches over the well-preserved early 16th century frescoes, which cover almost the entire wall space of the church. Saints wherever you look, and stories that are not to be found in any other church in Cyprus, styled in the spirit of the time. Through the royal door, the priest enters the altar area, the Byzantine rite has survived all the turmoil of history with solemn worship. The mountains of the southeastern Trudos are barren, remote and desolate. Yet people once settled here. At first glance, the small settlement has everything one would expect of a village. A church, a cemetery and a few houses. But today, something's missing. Villages. In 1978, Fikaru was designated as a listed village and so became a museum village. In the 1960s and 70s, the inhabitants gradually left this mountain village. Life was too hard, with no prospect of improvement. In the harsh winter months, the women sat at their looms and weaved. Men potted about in the basement. Most of the buildings were saved from falling into total decay, and two of the best preserved were transformed into museums. Finally, the tiny Timios Stavros church, set in the natural surroundings of the village of Palendri. More precious Byzantine wall paintings. The treasures of priceless art located amid the untouched Trudos Mountains.
This concentration of priceless treasures of world culture contained within a relatively small area is probably unique in the world. Here, a tumultuous past and a glorious history accompanied the guardians of both faith and tradition in their quest for peace. The Islands of the Gods resembles a magnificent picture book. A melting pot of various influences at the intersection of both Orient and Occident. Cyprus, synonymous with myth, legend, treasures, culture, and very large doses of sunshine.